morning guys and it is training time earlier session today because I got a couple of things planned I'm gonna go see an old friend who I haven't seen for a long time which is the whole thing of this year as I said I wanted to connect more not only with you guys but with people in my personal life and I'm making a serious effort to do that so I've stuck to my goals and I'm sticking to that commitment now I'm back on my programming. I took a few weeks off and did some superset work, a bit of hypertrophy, it's 12 rep range work, but I'm done with that now and I wanna get back to my programming because I am in the UK now until the 22nd of July, and then I'm only away for 10 days and then I'm back, so I can commit to a bit more of a routine. Why am I away on the 22nd? Because Gymshark has a tour. We are doing an East Coast tour. When I say we, it's gonna be me, Nikki, and Robin Gallant. I think that's how you say it. If I've got it wrong, shh, don't tell her. We're gonna be going from New York to Philadelphia to Washington. Hell yeah. We'll be meeting in set places yet to be announced, and we're basically just coming to meet all of you guys. We're doing a tour down the East Coast for the start, that is just the start of a Gymshark World Tour. So stay tuned. So today's training session is gonna be quads, chest, calves. I'm going to get my creatine in now. I'm going to go and take a friend's helmet back to the bike place and then I'm going to go from there to the gym. Now, I take pre-workouts. People always ask me, pre-workouts, what do you take? What do I like to take? How do you use them? At the moment, I'm using EHP Labs and I'm using their RPM and their PSI. Now, there are two differences between those products. That's why I have both of them in. One of them is about energy and focus. The other one is about focus and pump. So they're very two different products. Now you need to know that. So basically, if you look on the back of an ingredient profile on any product, and in the proprietary blend it has arginine. If it's got arginine in it, that means it's gonna give you a pump, which is great for weightlifting. What it's not so great for is cardio work. Now today, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do bag work, and then I'm gonna go and do the rest of my routine. So, what that means, means basically I have to pick the one that's not gonna create a pump during the boxing. Because if you're trying to do bag work and you get pumped out, you're literally not gonna be able to do it. It sucks. And if you ever took, any of you guys ever remember that, um, the Super Pump 250 that was originally released, which was awesome, but you could not use it on back days because your forearms are blocked, your lower back are pump out. Ow! It was crazy. When you're choosing pre-workouts and things like that, sometimes you've got to think, what's your main goal? What do you want to use it for? Do you want it for the energy and the focus, or do you want it more for kind of the, the pump and vascularity and blood flow? You do need to know that. You need to know about ingredient profiles when looking at that. And we will be doing a truth video, the simple truth video, which you guys love. If you haven't seen the latest one, card will appear up here or click and open a new window. But we're doing one of those on pre-workout, we're doing one on protein, and we'll be doing one on all the different variations of the protein that you can get. So kind of like the ones that are meal replacements. Oh, and also, the whole thing about connecting and giving back to you guys. Don't forget, we created that free website for you between me and my super nerds, and it's www.supscompare.com. It's literally a free website for you guys to use to be able to check for the brands that you want or the style of supplement that you want, and it will literally bring up the best deals on the day for you. Oh, also, I have, as I said, got discount codes going. Lex10 will be going for the EHP Labs um, as a standard now across the board. You'll be able to see that. As you guys know, I've never really been signed or contracted with any supplement company. You've seen me use two different people's products, but not one company have I stuck with because it's not just about the quality of the products, but I also want to be working with people that benefit me as an athlete and you as a customer. Like people who are forward thinking, know about social media and, and give a crap about longevity. A lot of these, a lot of these companies, man, they're, they're just there for the quick bang shotgun sale tactic bullshit and the actual products suck. But I've been using EHP since Ross in Oslo when we went to do that shoot together and try it for a long period of time. I tell you guys, I'm not getting sick of it. I'm not getting sick of it. So yeah, more news on that one. But it's Independence Day, a 20% Independence Day discount for you guys for them as well, which will be Lex 20, I think. So 20% off the entire range. There's also the Gymshark offer going to be doing up to 70% sale across the board, and that's gonna run until the end of July. And if you buy anything in that sale, you will get entered into a draw. There's three gonna be three winners. The third place will get a 50 pound card through across the store online. Second place, we're gonna get a 150 pound card. The first place, the person who wins the competition will receive a Gymshark black card. And that means that you will literally be sent all the products that we as athletes get sent 
before they're released for an entire year. It is a massive prize and you will probably need to invest in a new wardrobe. <laughs> Good luck, hope you all get what you need. Back on with today. So the plan for the rest of the day is basically to go drop off this helmet, meet Lainey at the gym. She's going to be training quads as well, so we're going to hopefully link up on quads. But prior to that, we've got to do the bag work. The reason I do the bag work at the beginning is simply I get so pumped during training, it's very hard for me to throw punches. Boom, pump, out, can't work. And I end up not getting a decent workout in because not only do I want the cardio effect from the boxing, but I want to improve on my technique, and I can't do that if I can't move properly. So what I need to do is get the bag work done under my own steam, but then I've got to do a workout. So what I want to do is time it so that my pre-workout kicks in as the bag work's coming to an end. Pre-workouts for me take around about 20 minutes to kick in. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to take the pre-workout with me to the gym. My bag work's going to take me about 20 minutes to get going. 25 if warm-ups and everything are done properly. Shh, don't tell anybody. So I'm gonna go for the pre-workout that gives me energy and focus rather than the pump. So the two that I've been using for as strength training, one is RPM, the secondary PSI. Pump, no pump. So the two good ingredients to hear in that one when you want something to do with the pump is the citrulline mallet and the L-arginine. The moment you hear arginine, think pump. So that's one I want to avoid taking whilst doing the bag workout. That'd be one that I would use much more whilst I'm doing shh. Trying to record here, trying to record. Go, go on, yes, thank you. So there's my theory, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the gym, I'm going to take the RPM, which is the non-pump formula, which will rocket my ass into the workout afterwards without me feeling kind of like, oh. We're also gonna be doing another bag video and it's going to be, that was part one. So there's gonna be as many parts as I can fit in there that you guys wanna see. The next one we're gonna look at a couple more combinations and we're also gonna start taking a look at kicks, knees and elbows as we move along. Have to be a little bit careful with elbows on the bag because for those of you that follow me on the Instagram, you can get kind of like mat burn on your elbows because bam, hitting the bag with an elbow. You're obviously rubbing skin against leather. It's gonna burn you. So if you are intending on doing a lot of elbow work, nip to a Poundland store and pick up some elbow sleeves or something. Cheap and cheerful, just something to put a, a protective barrier between you and the bag. And that's all, so let's go. Oh, oh, you, oh, you bastard. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I kicked the stool right with my toes. Why are you kicking the stool? Why are you kicking the stool? Rocks. Get it, Rocks. Get it. No. no. <laughs> Little bullies have um, allergies to the, the things like grass and farmland and whatnot. So what we do is we put some of this almond oil. Look at that. And what we do, so we rub the almond oil in, into her skin, and it helps just like, she smells like almonds for the next few hours and spends the majority of the day trying to eat herself. It's still happy. I love it. Could she be putting that nice tasting stuff on her again so that when you leave the room, I can just simply lick it all the days. Nom. Only, only organic almond oil for our best puppies. You too could have a puppy that smells like nuts. Even a mess in my kitchen. Here's the benefit of getting um, a decent quality product as well with your creatine, getting that micronized that we were talking about before. So it's got BCAAs in it and creatine. And literally, that's it. Mixed. No bits. Quality does cost a little bit more. It shouldn't cost a lot more. But that little tiny bit of increase in product quality makes a massive difference just in your everyday usage. I know a lot of people want value for money all the time, but don't go too cheap because it is like the old saying says, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. A little bit of a top tip. If you're like me, you've got little joints and things like your knees and stuff hurt you when you're training legs, especially when it's cold. Compression wear is really good for helping keep the blood and warmth and heat around in the muscles and the joints. So this is what I wear when I'm training legs and it's a lightweight compression wear. Little handy hint. Handy tip, bring just the shot of pre-workout you need. That way, if anything happens, like it spills or lids open, you don't lose your whole container. So I've been here about 20 minutes, and what have we done is talked about UFC. So what are your thoughts? Jordan reckons, this is Jordan, by the way, everyone. Jordan, he reckons that Connor's gonna do it and take Diaz. I'm saying no, as much as I love Connor. Should have taken the fight at 155. I'm actually gonna get on with my workout now. 
supposed to help me work out, not hinder me. I've made, only made it halfway through this, so this was my BCA in creatine. I've got my pre-workout in here. <laughs> I'm gonna sip on this while I'm hitting these eight rounds. One minute rounds, 30 seconds rest. I'm gonna do that speed, fight pace, knockout shots. Sipping on this and hopefully this will then kick in as I finish using it straight to quads and chest. So like I said, most gyms will have their own set of spare gloves for you to use on the bag, and that's what I'm doing today, because I was on the bike, I forgot to pack mine, because I'm a dingle, but at least I've got my wraps on. <laughs> that's, a, that's a smell of victory. Done. You know the three sets. Ladies here. Ah. Quads and chest. Oh. Let's go. Okay, so you can see 15, 5, 5, 15 reps, 3 seconds rest holding the weight, 5 reps, 3 seconds rest holding the weight, 
five reps. If you have spotters on this, you can get them to support the weight to take and alleviate the muscle, and that can let you get the weight up a touch more if you want to, but it doesn't really matter. It's all about time under tension, and it's volume training, essentially, but it's just pushing those mental boundaries. What I'm looking for here is to maintain a straight line between my heel, my knees, and my hips. I don't want the knees rocking in or out when I'm lifting and I'm driving through the heels. And when I'm coming down, I'm not letting my legs rest on my torso. So I'm making sure that I'm stopping. I have a stop point and start point. So I'm not just bouncing through it. Stop, press, stop, press, and not locking out at the top. I just have two plates aside. It's not about the weight, it's about the technique, the form, and the focus. Huh. Next. Okay, so we're moving on to the leg extensions. What I'm looking for here is legs to be close together, mainly because on a lot of these leg extensions, the actual foot pad tends to be slightly off angle. So the closer you keep your feet together, the more even the leverage point is going to be. Just the nature of these machines. Some are perfect, some aren't. So if yours is okay, you can split your feet, hip width apart. If not, do them close together. On this, I'm looking for the seat to be far back so that my actual lower back is not touching the seat. So the seat will be here resting on just my upper back and I'm going to be sitting forward. What this does is create a downward angle that way. It means when I come back up, my full extension point, rather than being here, I'm putting stress on the knee, so this is my knee joint here. Because I'm angling my body, it means that my full extension is going to be there rather than here. If that makes sense, and that keeps the load on the quad. This is going to suck. <laughs> What you're looking for on that is to make sure that your feet are staying symmetrical either side, toes up, so you're putting your toes, heels here, toes pulled in. That's going to help keep engagement on the quad. Don't let your butt lift off the seat. That's going to bring it onto your hip flexors and onto your knees. And make sure that as you're lifting, positive and negative, your feet aren't moving around. What you'll see is a lot of people have a tendency for one foot to kind of cock off to one side. That's going to rotate the whole knee joint and completely screw you up over time. Of those done, lobster with that was a crazy ass green. And now moving on, chest. So here we go, 15 5 5 again. I'm gonna be using that seated chest press, and then I'm gonna move on to some dumbbell flies. It's getting hard now, it's getting hard. We're moving, we're rocking, feeling good. I think my tactic of taking the pre workout as I was going through the bag work is working really well. I don't seem to be having any lulls. I've got a real drive and focus just to move and keep moving. And actually, coming off the bag work, I had that kind of uh, mentality of next round, next round, next round, which was really great. Like I wanted to get straight into the leg movements rather than sitting around and feeling tired. I just felt like I wanted to go. So, really good. Try putting your bag work first and just fucking go, go, go. Onward. Uh, uh. Freaking, that sucked, that was hard as hell. 15, five, five, done. And you can see the weight is not heavy. I sacrifice weight and ego for control, technique, and progress, and gains. For those of you that know, I blew out my left rotator cuff, so what I'm watching for on all my movements is the left side. Focus, bitch. There we go. I'm looking for watching for the left side, dropping too quickly, and also overextending on the negative. So the trick that I try and follow there is I follow my right side down, and then I follow my left side up. So on the negative, I follow my right arm with my left, because this is my weak side, and that's where the error lies. And then 
on the way back up, I follow my weak side with my strong side so that I make sure that I'm not over pressing on my strong side. If you don't have a spotter, that's a really, really simplistic way of just correcting those imbalances and it works across the board on anything. Four more sets. Okay, so it's got to the point now where my shoulders are absolutely pumped out and they're the limiting factor rather than my chest. So I'm switching up the flies into a narrow press, then doing the 5-5 five five in a normal press. We're on a slightly declined bench, so it's a slight different hit up from the seated one that we did before. And this one's just a matter of getting the reps out now. That's it. The main thing is mental boundaries. I was done and I found an alternative way to push through and I will complete my goal. Fifteen, five, five. Whew. Quads, chest. Previous bad work, but back. Kind of speak, bad work. Now I'm going to finish on normal calves. Not doing fifteen, five, five. Just heavy, eight to twelves. Because the calves are very, very dense muscle fibers. They're used to volume work, so I like to just hit them heavy and consistently. This will be the third time I'm hitting them this week. Oh. Mm. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, go again. Come on. Final one. Final one. That was like five sets in five minutes. No excuses. No excuses when you're tired. Just keep on pushing. So, oh. hope that gives you some ideas to integrate into your own workouts. Remember what I said, lose the ego, lose the weight, control, technique, gains. Now, let's go enjoy the rest of the day. Ah!